All right, guys, so we're going to look at a currency appreciation. So what we're really looking at is how does the value of a currency change? In this case specifically, when we talk about currency appreciating, appreciates is defined as a currency becoming more valuable relative to other currencies. So it's comparing two different currencies. We're going to keep it euros and dollars at this time. There's not any reason to change it and make it more difficult. Um, so we're saying what would cause the U.S. dollar to become more valuable compared to the euro, okay? Um, well, looking at our model, this can happen by either an increase in the demand or a decrease in the supply of the U.S. dollar. So then that would cause it to cost more euros per dollar. So we're going to display this the most common way, and that's by an increase in the demand for that currency. So in this case, it is the U.S. dollar is our example. So we have our new point of equilibrium, and that is going to give us a new exchange rate that we can see is clearly higher than the original exchange rate. So what's happening is that now it will cost more euros to buy one single dollar. So that's what it looks like, a shift right of the demand curve. So then the question obviously becomes, well, what would cause this demand curve for the U.S. dollar? to shift right. Why are people demanding more US dollars? So we're comparing again, since we're doing the Euro, we're comparing a lot of European countries to the United States. So we have five things here, and you'll notice that three of them have the word relative. Relative income, relative inflation, relative interest rates. And the idea here is pretty simple. Again, it is any comparison to the other country, in this case with the Euro, multiple countries. I'm just going to probably say the word country um, just because it's easier. So yes, I know, Europe, not a country. Um, but just for the sake of simplicity. So we're comparing what can cause Europeans to demand more American dollars. We'll go back to the key assumption that we discussed in the previous video. And that is the fact that if you want to buy something from another country, the way you have to do it is you have to pay for it in that country's currency. So I gave you the example of if Americans we wanted to buy more PS4s or Toyotas or Hondas, we'd have to do that um, by paying for it in yen. Okay. So what that would mean is on the foreign exchange market, in order for us to buy more PlayStations and more Toyotas, we would demand more yen. In this example, we're talking about Europe, Europeans demanding more US dollars. So five things that would cause them to want more American stuff is what we're really getting at because this demand is represented by them wanting American stuff. It's as simple as that. So what would cause Europeans to buy more American stuff? Letter A, changes in tastes. This one's very simple and straightforward. If Europeans, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter, decide that they want more American stuff, they think that Fords and Chevys are great cars, um, they think that um, whatever some kind of American company, they start wanting that stuff that we are producing um, that will cause them to buy that American stuff. And remember, for them to buy those American products, those Fords and Chevys, it's going to cause them, they have to pay for it using U.S. dollars. So on the foreign exchange model, they are going to demand more American dollars. The other flip side of that is that for them to demand more U.S. dollars, if they're buying U.S. dollars, what are they selling? They are selling euros. Um, which we'll get to that in a little bit. What's actually happening to them is that they are supplying more euros. But for now, let's keep it on the U.S. side and the appreciation. So, change of taste if they want more American stuff. Letter B. B, C, and D is where it gets a little bit tricky. Okay? I will tell you that um, right now. This is where any confusion in this unit usually comes from these three things. Letter B says relative income changes. And specifically, if we can read this, I don't know if you can, slower growth. That means slower growth in the United States. So the question will naturally come, well, why on earth would slower growth, um, slower income changes, so lower income in the United States compared to Europe, why would that cause Europeans to buy more American stuff? Well, here's the idea, and it's actually pretty simple. What this is telling us, this is saying that in America, so all these things in blue here, this is in the U.S., all right? So I'm going to put that here to try to remind us of that because, again, some of these look a little paradoxical almost. If we're experiencing slower income growth, that means that Europe must be experiencing higher uh, income growth, correct? 
So when they are experiencing higher income growth, they are getting their income is growing faster than ours. That means that they have more money to buy stuff, right? Like we know, when income increases, aggregate demand increases. Like that is simply they have more money. So guess what they're going to do with some of that additional money? They are going to increase their imports. Um, they are going to buy more American stuff simply because they have greater income relative to us. At the same time in the United States, since we have income that's either falling or not growing as quickly as in Europe, we don't have as much money to buy everything in general overall, and some of the things that we don't have as much money to buy are going to be European goods. So relative to Europe, their income is growing faster than ours, it's going to cause our currency to rise, to appreciate, because they are going to demand more US dollars so that they can buy, import more American goods. So this is really telling us they're going to import more. Letter C, relative inflation rate changes. So this is saying what we have here in blue is lower inflation in the United States. If we have lower inflation, that's going to cause America, or, uh, Europeans to buy more American stuff, which again, why would that be? Well, think about it. What this is saying, if we have lower inflation rates in the US, that is telling us explicitly that Europeans, they obviously have higher inflation. Okay, because again, it's relative compared one compared to the other. So if Europe has higher inflation, that means a higher price level. So the prices of their things are getting more expensive. The price of American things are not, however, or at least they are not growing in price as quickly as European prices. So what that means is European goods, they're becoming more expensive. Relative to that, the price of the American goods doesn't actually change. But compared to the price change of European goods that are becoming more expensive, this is kind of like our substitutes idea from way back in original supply and demand model in unit one. When European goods become more expensive, relatively speaking, American goods become cheaper and we know what's going to happen. People are going to substitute their purchases. Europeans are going to buy more American stuff because it is relatively cheaper to them compared to the cost of European goods. Again, the price of the American stuff did not actually change. But the price of the European stuff, because of their high inflation, European stuff is becoming more expensive, so they can actually save money and do better by buying American stuff because it is not, the price level of that is not increasing. So lower inflation in the U.S. will cause the demand for the U.S. dollar to increase as Europeans, in this case, um, decide to avoid buying European stuff because the price is going up too much. They buy American instead. When they buy American, they have to demand U.S. dollars to do so shifts the demand curve to the right. Interest rates are going to have the opposite effect. Relative interest rates. In the U.S., it would be higher interest rates in the U.S. that are going to cause this appreciation. So higher relative interest rates. So this goes back to that loanable funds model that we did. It's a couple videos back um, talking about international capital inflows. Money investors, when they want to put their money into a bank, they want to get the highest interest rate possible. Okay, So what happens is when we have higher interest rates, we are American banks then are offering them a better return for their dollar or for their currency. But to put their money into American banks, they have to convert it. They need U.S. dollars. So if they want to invest in the American market, it requires U.S. dollars for them to do that. So they will want to higher interest rates will encourage Europeans to put their money in the U.S. They have to convert them to U.S. dollars, so to do that, the demand for the U.S. dollar will increase, shifts to the right, causing the value of the dollar to appreciate or to increase. And E is basically saying the same thing as D. E is saying changes in expected return on investment. So when you expect in one country or the other a higher return, so in, if we are expecting in the U.S. for whatever reason, for you to make more money on investment in the US than in Europe, guess what Europeans are going to do with good money? They're going to put their money into the United States because they expect a higher investment. Again, to put their money in the US requires that they change their euros to dollars. Demand for dollar increases, causing shift right, and we see the exchange rate increases, causing the dollar to become more valuable relative to the euro. If your head is spinning, rewatch it. Pause it. Um, this isn't that bad. It sounds worse than it is. Um, you guys will get the hang of it pretty quickly. All right.
Deuces.